In this video, we're going to take a look at the model object in Spring Boot. Now, why do we need the model object? Let's go back and remember what our controller is. Remember, the, the controller is part of this model view controller architecture. And one thing I really like about Spring Boot is it's really easy to determine what the model view and the controller are because of the name. The controller is the thing called controller and annotated with the at controller annotation. The view is essentially an HTML page, and that's, in our case it is, could be other things. But that's what we're referencing when we say return start. Because if we take a look under here, uh, at our project, we go to resources and then templates, and you see start.html. That's what we're returning from this controller. It's a reference to the start.html. Naturally, if we had other HTML files here, uh, we would have words that match those as well. We might have one for add a specimen, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, I still need to answer what the model is. I've told the, the view and controller, but what's the model? Well, the model is essentially the representation of data that we're going to send to this template. And right now, this template is just a plain old HTML page. You can style it with whatever kind of styling you like. If you like doing React or you like doing just some jQuery or whatever it is that's your fancy. For me, just plain old HTML, JavaScript, and CSS works pretty well sometimes. But nonetheless, this view will become much more interactive if we're able to push a model to it. In other words, if we're able to push some objects to it. And it's quite straightforward. So I'm going to run back to the controller class. And let's take a simple endpoint I can hit from a browser. We'll go ahead and do this one called read. It's one I've, I've played with before. The other nice thing about read is that from a previous video, I've obtained the specimen DTO, which is an ideal model. A DTO makes for a good model. Sometimes when we get to the view layer, we'll call them value objects, but it's essentially the same thing. And for me as a programmer, I have found that I like to use one DTO through the entire stack from persistence to UI instead of having different DTOs at different places because there's too much chance for redundancy and duplication. But nonetheless, that's another story. So our goal here is to take the specimen DTO and ship it over to the HTML file called start.html. It's easy to do, although I will say it threw me off at first. Now, my first experience with Java was in the late 1990s with Java 1.1, and that was a very different world from what we have now. Uh, the way I always knew Java was you have your method parameters and the method call has to match that method parameter signature, so on and so forth. But there's something interesting in Spring Boot. If we need something like model, we just go ahead and put it in the signature and Spring Boot figures out how to populate it for us. Uh, so that kind of blew me away at first. It's like, well, you just put it in there if you need it and it'll figure it out. So, but it works. So cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and import model. And now what we'll do is we'll say model dot add attribute. We're going to do it as simply as we can. Uh, so we'll call this one specimen. Whoops. We need to give it a, give it a, a name here. Specimen DTO. And we'll simply pass in specimen DTO and terminate with the semicolon. Okay. That's how we add it to the model from this end. Now, another thing that, that really threw me off here is you really feel like you want to now return this model object, but you don't have to. You still return a string. Now, there's actually something called uh, model view, which is kind of a different story, and you actually would return that, but we'll talk about that later. So that's really all you have to do to make this specimen DTO available to the HTML page. Now, the next step is we want to show the data on the HTML page. And if you take a look right now, you'll notice it's just a plain old HTML page. We need to add a special tag library. In other words, you're looking at HTML tags right now. You've probably seen them before. But we can enhance this with a special tag library. The only trick is we have to add that tag library to the HTML tag on line number two. In other words, we have to give it a reference and say, oh, by the way, here's a tag library I want you to use. So what we'll do for that is we'll say xmlns colon th equals double quote http colon slash slash www.timeleaf.org and close quote. And now it's easy to mistype this. I will have this pushed to GitHub. I recommend you just copy what I'm doing. I just clone it straight from GitHub or copy it. Now we want to show that specimen DTO. So I'm going to say uh, p 
the paragraph tag, and then th colon text. So notice this attribute called text is referencing the th library, if you notice the th up here. So essentially that time leaf library. So I'm going to say th text equals th colon text equals double quote. And then I'm going to say inside of the double quote, I'm going to say dollar sign curly. And then whatever name I gave to my object when I put it in that model. So I called it specimen DTO, just like so. Uh, we'll go ahead and close curly and like so. And then I'll save restart and let's just see what we get to this point. As a matter of fact, let me put some text above it that says your specimen is, and this is kind of quick and dirty. I should really put that in a label, but nonetheless, uh, this will work for our purposes. So right click and I'll throw this in the debugger in case I want to debug it. While it's debugging, one thing I want to, or while it's starting, one thing I want to point out is in the POM XML to use TimeLeaf, make sure that you are including this TimeLeaf library. Now I got a bit of conflicting information on the web. Uh, what I saw was that TimeLeaf includes everything that this Spring Boot Starter web includes. I did take this dependency out and then my project no longer built because it couldn't find the request mapping annotation, so I put it back in. So take that for what it's worth. You might find some information uh, other than what I found. So with that, now let's go back to our browser and take a look. We do see something that is different. We do see some indication that things are working here because we have this new label text your specimen is. But on the other hand, what in the world is this? If I do a control U, uh, we can see sure enough that's put in our P tag and there's our your specimen is uh, that we added earlier. Well, that is the default sprint, uh, string representation of our DTO. So by default, it's going to call to string. And what to string does is it gives us back a package name and then a class name and then an at symbol and then essentially like a heap address, a kind of a hexadecimal thing that uniquely identifies this object, but not very human readable. So to take care of this, we need to go back to our object, which is our specimen DTO, and we need to add a toString method. In DTOs, we'll typically only have getters and setters, but toString, clone, and equals are three methods that we are often permitted to have and uh, common to have. So I start typing T-O-S-T, control space uh, in Eclipse is the help me out. And I see I want to override the toString method. So inside here, I'm simply going to return the value of these attributes. Let's say uh, return specimen ID plus, whoop, spell that correctly, plus and then space plus uh, latitude plus space plus longitude plus space plus description. I love Java. But right now, my Kotlin friends are probably screaming as I am and saying a two string you get by default in Kotlin. And also, you don't have to do this goofy plus syntax to concatenate things together. But nonetheless, that's progress. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and terminate this and then restart it. Uh, so right click and then we'll go ahead and debug as Java application. And let's see if this makes a difference. I come back over and refresh and we see sure enough we get your specimen is 43 null null null. That's not perfect but it's a bit better. Why is it 43 null null null? Well you might recall a couple of videos ago uh, we made a service class a uh, specimen service stub and all I did was set the specimen ID to 43. So let's go ahead and add remember, remember a stub is just a hard-coded kind of this is how things will work. So it's okay to go ahead and hard code some things here. So let's say latitude, uh, we'll use my home city of Cincinnati. So we'll go with 39 or 30, whoops, uh, it should be set latitude. And there we go. And now uh, 39.74 is roughly Cincinnati's latitude. And then specimen DTO dot set longitude. And for that one, that one's an easy one. It's minus 84.51 or 50. Uh, now I have these saved as strings. Reason I did that is something called floating point arithmetic, which can be a real pain in the rear if you're dealing with latitude and longitude because they have a high, they have a decimal. Uh, so after this, we'll say specimen DTO, one more to go. And then we'll say set uh, description and we'll say a beautiful Eastern Redbud. 
Uh, another, this tree, if you do live in the Ohio Valley, is a must-have uh, for the local landscape. Uh, creates its own nitrogen from the atmosphere. Edible flowers, a very carefree plant. So we save and then we'll restart. And we'll spring boot back. Let's go ahead and refresh our page. Ah, much better. Take a look at this one. We could probably reorder this in the tooth string, but we have our specimen ID, we have our latitude, we have our longitude, and then we have the description, a beautiful eastern redbud. So we see now we're able to take DTOs from our underbelly, from our code essentially, and we're able to push them through to HTML. Now this specimen service stuff, I mentioned I did this in a previous video, so if you think that kind of came out of nowhere, that's where they came from. If you didn't see that video and you want to try this on your own, you could always mock the entire DTO object up in the control and push it back. You know, we're just trying things out here, so that's fair. So we've looked at the model class. There are a couple of others. Model map is simply a map of attributes. Uh, model and view is an interesting one because that simply combines the concept of model and view. So in other words, instead of returning the string start, you take that string start, which points to our start HTML page. You set that into this model and view object, uh, along with any attributes that you want to push to the page, and then you return this entire model and view object. In other words, here's what we'll do. I want to leave this as is so I can commit and push it to GitHub. So I'm going to go to a different endpoint that I can call, and I know this one here I can call if I add loyalty equals silver into the URL. So with this one, with model and view, you don't need to do that thing where you stuff it into the parameter list in the method. Instead, you just create a new object, which I will say does feel kind of weird to do in Spring, but okay. So model and view, model and view equals new model and view. And I will say, I, I just feel uncomfortable calling a constructor in, in Spring, but nonetheless, there we go. So click and let's go ahead and import model and view. So no change to the method signature, uh, except one thing. We're actually going to return, instead of returning a string, guess what? We're going to return a model and view. And then we'll simply return, I'll, I'll cut the start part, model and view. Okay, so now let's say model and view. And we'll say set view name. And remember that part I cut just a moment ago? Well, there we go. Go ahead and paste it. Okay, now we'll say model and view and of course feel free to give that a shorter name if you prefer and then we'll say dot add object okay it looks very similar to what we did before where we give it a name so we'll say specimen whoops specimen dto and then we give it a value specimen dto just like so uh okay and terminate with the semicolon now one trick whoops one trick here is I don't have a local specimen DTO because that was the specimen service stub line that I have in my other endpoint method, my other endpoint handler. That's easy enough. We can simply go up there. It's just one line. We can navigate up here and we can copy this line with any luck and copy and simply move it down to our new endpoint down here. So and paste. And once we've done that, we're in good shape. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to take the specimen ID. A specimen DTO. And I'm going to change the specimen ID. So we'll say set specimen ID, oh, just so that you can tell that we're obviously using this method uh, and not the method that I created earlier. So you can just kind of give a, a quick look and feel and say, okay, yeah, uh, we're using the right method. So we'll let it restart. And the only difference now is I'm going to add this loyalty equals silver into the URL so we can, so we can make sure that this method gets called. So Spring Boot is restarted. So I'm going to go to start and then question mark loyalty hopefully i spelled this all right equals silver and enter and let's take a look at what we get aha uh -huh. you see we got the same results as last time but take a look there sure enough we did get the number 83 indicating that the method that we just created was called where we hard coded in that 83. so you see here that model and view is really just a different way of doing what model does if you prefer returning an object instead of a string from a method, it's a good choice. I, I kind of do. I prefer returning an object just because a lot of times when I see a method that returns a string, many times I'm thinking this isn't very object oriented. It's very old school style, lots of strings and if tests. So nonetheless, that's a look at the model object in Spring. Much more to come from this because you see now that you can make that HTML page dynamic, there's a whole lot of UI that you can put on top of this, a whole lot of different libraries because the HTML content is essentially driven by our Java objects. 
So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.